we are getting the thumbs up to go. <laughs> so welcome to a therapist take. We're going to talk about authenticity today because Merriam Webster named that the word of the or actually the word that they named was authentic as being the word of the year for 2023. So don't go anywhere. So thank you for joining in to Therapist Take again. So this podcast, this episode is actually going to mark our first episode for season two. <laughs> it's starting in 2024, I mean 2023 on the, sorry, it is 2024 it coming is. up. Wow, I'm a year behind. So yes, so starting in January of 2024, uh, this is when it will drop on the podcast, but of course... You are could be watching this live right now as we are recording this before Christmas. Mm -hmm. So, and we're going to talk about in this episode uh, authenticity. And the word authentic was the uh, Merriam Webster's pick for word of the year for 2023. And so, we're going to talk about that a little bit. But before we begin, just want to remind everybody to please do all the shenanigans that you're supposed to do on social media. So wherever you're watching this, you know, if you're on uh, Facebook, follow our page. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to our channel, like the video. And then, of course, if you are listening to this on the podcast, please go do all the aforementioned things I just <laughs> said and give us a five-star review, write us a nice little comment. And that really helps, supposedly, with the the algorithms. And so, mm -hmm. uh, that would really be helpful and nice. But, so back to the topic at hand. The first thing, I just want to say hi to Carrie, mm -hmm. as always. As always. It's good seeing you. Yes, Always you too. on Friday morning. I do feel like I really look forward to this time on the podcast because when we talk, it's like, Everything's just really calm. Mm -hmm. And usually when we're like passing each other in the hallways, we're like, hey, we got to get this taken care of. We got to get this right. done. And it's like really frantic and yep. business-like. And mm -hmm. then I just feel much more relaxed. Like, oh. Yeah. Well, it's quieter here too on Fridays compared to Monday through Thursday. Sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And also too, and we just get to sit down and know that our job right now is just talk for 30 yeah. minutes. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is really part of our job though. Well, you've made it part of our job. <laughs> Till we get paid for it. <laughs> we will be. Maybe um, someday. Yes, yes. And uh, so we're going to talk about authenticity. So we know like in 2023, no, sorry. 2022. This, the 2022 word of the year was gaslighting. Mm -hmm. And we wrote uh, a blog about that. We uh, did it. We have a YouTube video on it. And I was really hoping the concept of brake lighting <laughs> would uh would catch on because uh -huh. i think that was kind of on the the uh the thumbnail of the youtube video it's kind of got it's got gas crossed out with break written in and uh just the idea of uh putting a stop to gaslighting but right. i think that's kind of what we're going to talk about as one of our main points in this episode uh with uh, authenticity basically being a brake light you know right. so being an antidote to gaslighting so mm -hmm. So before we jump into all that, let's just kind of go over uh, the things we're going to try to cover in the very short time that we have. So the first thing we're going to talk about is what is authenticity or what does it mean to be authentic, you know, first of all. And then from there, we're going to move into kind of just a logical next step. It's like, okay, now that, you know, if we've defined it, how do we access it? Mm -hmm. And then uh, the last thing being what we just, what I just mentioned was, uh, authenticity is potentially a uh, an antidote to gaslighting. Mm -hmm. So we're going to mm -hmm. spend some, spend some time on that. So, but the first thing I want to ask you, Carrie, is uh, uh, when you think of uh, authenticity in connection with a celebrity, who comes to mind to you? Should we reveal that we briefly talked about this oh, before? Don't, don't give it don't away. Don't give it away. I know we shouldn't have because it took away the magic of it, right? We did have a pretty fun. We did have a fun exchange, which yeah. we can do again because we stopped, right? But I thought about it, and I just thought, who stands out as someone authentic and brave, and I guess willing to take risks? And so Nelson Mandela stood out to me. Yeah, and I know that 
that's a very very powerful well, image. And, and I think it's a it's a great uh, such a a perfect example of it too. Like so, in, in all honesty, I couldn't think of a better example. But it it uh, the fun the fun time that we had right before and what Carrie and I were talking about is is how like hers was way better than mine, <laughs> or at least that's what yeah. I said. That's what you said because uh, yeah. my example was Sarah Silverman, and I was just I was just trying to let it come naturally, you know, like mm-hmm. I just kind of. Sat down, I was like, well, who's the first person that pops in my head? And I don't know, you know, how authentic she is. I don't know right. her at all. Right. She just comes off that way to me. Mm-hmm. Like, she seems very genuine, very nurturing, very loving. And, of course, I think that's, like, I think when we're, when it comes to authenticity, there are certain things that uh, we uh, each individual kind of hones in on on what they're looking for. So with Nelson Mandela, you were looking for like a powerful figure, mm-hmm. somebody who's kind of been through it and and uh, persevered mm-hmm. and and stayed true to themselves along the way. Right. Right. You know? right. Doesn't no matter the consequences. Right. Yeah. So for me, kind of what what I'm looking for is somebody that seems like they care mm-hmm. and someone who loves. You mm-hmm. know and 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 again, like I do not know her right. at all, right. but um, anything I've ever seen with her, she just seems um, true to that persona, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, and you might have caught yourself talking with maybe your husband or a friend or somebody about after you've seen somebody on like an interview with like Jimmy Fallon. Oh, Jimmy Fallon. I don't know. Maybe maybe not. But you know, an interview with a talk show host or something, and you're like. Um, I really like them. Mm-hmm. You ever do that? Actually, I just the other day watching the morning news. Mm-hmm. There was a, a you know news anchor came on, and I'm like, I don't know this person. This person doesn't know me. I just feel like I trust him. I feel like he's <laughs> really good at his job. Yeah. It's just a feeling, right? Yeah. Like who's going to talk to me about this? Oh yeah, I really want to listen to that. I really trust right. him. Yeah. And it's so bizarre, right? Because they have yeah. no relationship with him. Right. Right. Yeah. But yeah. sure. I think comedians in general probably are more authentic. Yeah. I mean, it could be the shtick of being authentic, but you know, yeah. they're not they're not taking on the persona of a character like an actor or actress, right? It's sure. they're coming out and being usually. What's funny is the things that are real, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, it's and funny s- you mentioned that because Jim Gaffigan was the the second person I thought of. Really, that. But of course, Sarah Silverman's a comedian, right? Too, right. right, right, right. Yeah, and I think that is maybe so. Maybe that's also why that came to your mind too. It's just in general that maybe yeah. comics are pretty authentic. Yeah. And the interesting thing is too, is like, uh, you know, like, uh, some of the things like that, some of my guilty pleasures, like on YouTube and stuff is like, you know, the one, one I admittedly watched today is like, uh, five reasons or five people who do not like Brad Pitt. Um, I'm like, huh, why would you not like Brad Pitt? Like, you know, <laughs> and so of course I had to watch. I had course, to know right why. But that's that's also something that's intriguing. I mean, those are I, I do think that those types of what what do they call them when they those types of titles uh, clickbait clickbait right uh-huh. that type of clickbait it's clickbait because you know for people that are big fans like why that they, they want to know why somebody wouldn't want to work with Brad Pitt mm-hmm. or why somebody wouldn't like Sarah Silverman or not even Nelson Mandela for mm-hmm. example so anyways um let's get into the right <laughs> what is authenticity <laughs> authenticity mm-hmm. yeah so what is it to you i think it's i think a lot of it is that you know your insides match your outsides, right? That your words and actions match mm-hmm. up. That it's rooted, right? Mm-hmm. Something, something like that. And those are things I talk about in therapy. So that's probably why that pops into right. mind. Let me ask you this, um, because this is one thing that really tripped me up with it is that you know, first of all, you, you would agree that there's a difference in secrecy and privacy. Yes. Correct. Yes. Okay. So uh, to me, you know. Uh, you know, uh, privacy is not like it's. It's basically. I always think of like uh, journals or diaries. My wife has a stack of diaries. I've never read an ounce of one of them, and that's. I and don't don't pat me on the back too quickly because that's largely because I'm afraid of what she's <laughs> written me about them. <laughs> you know, uh, what she has said that she's not. Because uh, I was like, when I, you know, if 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 you 
if we die and our kids get these, or what are they going to read in mm-hmm. here? And she's like, I'm pretty sure I haven't written anything like that, you know. So, but how do you know? I don't know. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. How do I know? I, I have to read these diaries and find out. <laughs> Um, but you know, a diary is a great example to me because it's it, these are private thoughts, mm-hmm. you know. And um, people who keep diaries are does that mean they 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 are keeping secrets? Well, it could. I mean, there could be secrets in those diaries, but sure. the diary in and of itself, and the concept of journaling and putting your unfiltered thoughts into a space mm-hmm. um, is private. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's only for you and, and uh, things you're working out or processing through mm-hmm. and for you to decide who gets to know and mm-hmm. doesn't know. So there's a difference in privacy and secrecy in my yes, mind. Yes, absolutely. Right. So the thing that kind of trips me up with authenticity is, you know, is, do you, is there something you think that people could have as part of their private lives that might uh, challenge others perceptions of of their authenticity so yeah sure yeah i think so like what were you well i was i saw speaking of silly things on the internet i saw a clip of michelle obama the Mm -hmm. other day and she was talking about how she said and it struck me because she said there were so many years that i did not like my husband at all Mm. and so of course i'm like what because they always portray the strong relationship, right? Right. And she talked about the early years of little kids and, you know, just the, mm-hmm. now's the tasks increase, right? The weight of that. And that, I think that mm-hmm. I felt like she was being authentic, right? But it did challenge this perception of, oh, they're a really good partnership, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know. That just came into mind. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's like in somebody else reading that uh, might feel like she was being inauthentic by not disclosing that until now. Right. So right. So I think that's kind of when sometimes these figures that we perceive as to be authentic kind of fall from grace mm-hmm. is when they decide it's time to reveal something private to the public. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden to some people, that means they're not being authentic. Right. Right. This could even happen in family systems. It doesn't have anything to do with, Sure. you know, famous people, right? Mm-hmm. To find out that your grandparent or, you know, another family member was a different kind of person or had a different kind of experience right. can feel like you question the authenticity of that relationship. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So so what? So if we're agreeing that um, having things that are private for you, things that you're working out or processing, sorry, my, our light is, for you those watching this, if I just got dark on you, that's because our light just went off. That's okay. Um, but, um, so if we're agreeing that, you know, it's okay, you can be an authentic person and have things that you're going through and processing that you're choosing not to just openly share with everybody. Sure. You know, and, and things that you're working out and you'll it will share those uh, on your own time if you decide to share them at all, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so at, at what point th- at what point would that or something else create in authentic somebody make them inauthentic? Hmm. Yeah, that's a hard question. It's probably oh gosh, being so annoying. It's very probably specific. Right. Yeah, I think um, so. Yeah. I think that's what's hard is that people can probably feel genuinely betrayed by mm-hmm. people not revealing things to them, right? Yeah. Um, and I, those feelings are very real and perhaps valid. Mm-hmm. But also when you get more of the story, maybe you can hear the line of thinking and how that mm-hmm. felt safe or appropriate right. for someone to not not be completely transparent, right? right. It wasn't about not being authentic. Sure, absolutely. Um, yeah, I think it, it's probably you're right. I think I mean I agree with you that it's it's probably going to be uh, unique to each specific situation sure. and uh, in relationship. Um, I, but I kind of as I was thinking of, was thinking about that is I think it really has to do with self. You know, like mm-hmm. um, if if you feel like you're not being authentic then there's 
you know, I would think that might be a telltale sign that you're not. Right. So somebody else saying you're not being authentic, I don't think that that necessarily makes somebody not authentic. Mm -hmm. It just means that something that they've learned about you or experienced from you or something new has challenged their perception of you. So I think uh, one we could probably all relate to is when someone that we really like who's a celebrity decides they're going to speak their politics mm, mm-hmm. and then you're like oh no not not you <laughs> mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. and now i'm challenged like do i still want to be a fan sure you're know? sure. you teasing me about will smith earlier mm-hmm. you know and like uh obviously me being a big fan and i bring him up like Every at least fourth once a week podcast <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, with the slap heard from around the world, which mm. we just did a bonus episode on that that you can find on the podcast. But, um, you know, the challenge that that created with probably a lot of people on, like, what do we, what do, we do with that, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. But I don't think that necessarily makes somebody not authentic. Yeah. Yeah. But I think this is also things that we talk about a lot as therapists, right? That... Mm-hmm. Um, integrity is, you know, what you do, right? When when nobody's looking, and that's authentic. So if you're being yourself, yeah, right, regardless of the impact mm-hmm. or the, I mean, the information around you, mm-hmm. um, that's authenticity. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, what you're going for. Uh, I like to ask people the question to what version of you shows up in these different relationships, right? And I think that that's also a really I think that's a helpful question to start peeling back the mm-hmm. layers and exploring authenticity. Right. Yeah. I agree. Let, let's, uh, uh, we have the, the, uh, the article pulled up, the blog that was written mm-hmm. by uh, MarianWebster.com, and Hannah has that pulled up, and I'm just let, let her read uh, from that just a second so that we can kind of get their take on why this was picked as uh, the word of the year. All right, so authentic has a number of meanings, including not false or imitation, and it's a synonym for real or actual. It can also mean true to one's personality, spirit, or character. Uh, it's clearly a desirable quality, but it's hard to define and subject to debate. Two reasons it sends many people to the dictionary. <laughs> Uh, speaking, mm-hmm. I mean, speaking of, speaking of hard to define, like yeah, so, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. There is a, there is an ambiguity, yeah, to it sure. for sure. But I think because how can somebody else define what it means to be authentic mm-hmm. to you? Because that would kind of defeat the purpose, the purpose of, of what the word is is about. You know. So, so where do you find it? How do you know? Yeah, I think that's that's the question. It sounds like that. According to Marion Webster, <laughs> <laughs> the answer is uh, uh, self. I mean, mm-hmm. so I think this is where the concept of the true self comes in, you know. And so, you know, what is the true self? Mm-hmm. Another one of my favorite books is The Untethered Soul, which mm-hmm. I also mention a lot. Yeah. And uh, that, um, and that's basically what uh, he's he's going for and and kind of what he talks about is the true self is you without your stuff you know you Mm -hmm. without the true self is you without all your baggage right and and so you might i think that's my authentic self and one thing i talk a lot about with clients is like i one thing i tend to believe and this could change and if it does that doesn't mean i wasn't authentic (laughs) (laughs) um that i do believe that we like when it comes to our partners uh in in who we fall in love with i think we tend to fall in love with the true one of the the truer version of themselves because we're we're putting our best foot forward so to speak when we're dating you know like i gotta i'm gonna put the me forward the me without all my stuff you know and then what's appropriate though is i've got to introduce my baggage because that would if i don't that would be inauthentic you know so it would be appropriate at some point or along the way i've got look this greatness that is me (laughs) comes with some baggage let me introduce you to my baggage you know and to keep that hidden i think would fall into more of the realm of secrecy than privacy and inauthentic right Mm -hmm. yeah i think 
<clears throat> I was trying to remember too when you were talking about the book that defines true self. And I can't remember in uh, in one of our treatment models, the true self is defined by the four C's, and I can't remember all four, oh. but clarity, compassion, yeah. communication, I can't remember. Um, but I like those words because mm-hmm. I think that they are a nice, you know, container for mm-hmm. the definition of true self. And mm-hmm. I think that authenticity and true self is found in that part of our nervous system that just knows Mm-hmm. Right when you quiet down the noise, mm-hmm. and you really tune in, yeah. you know, right? Yeah, you and, know. Uh, the quiet can be quite noisy mm-hmm. sometimes. We we're masters at being noisy and busy. Right. Right. Yeah. So that's yeah. I mean, you know, the question of how do we access mm-hmm. our authentic self or our true self? I mean, that is not an easy question or an easy task no. in my opinion. So, no. um, and, and I don't even know, I don't even know if we could say for sure that it's, um, a task that is ever complete. No, 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 no. You just do your best while you're here. Right. Cause we're, 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 for, we're an ever evolving species, you know, like in, Mm-hmm. And relationships are also we call them complex systems, which means they're constantly changing. Right. You know. So, um, but I think it. You know, it, it does require people to take a deep dive into self instead of looking into the outer world to solve all my problems. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's time at some point I've got to t- start taking a look inside of self mm-hmm. and start figuring out me. Right. And what it means to figure me out. And I wish I could give a blueprint for that. Right. But again, as we know, for and because we do help people a lot with this, it's, it's different for everybody. Yeah, it's different. But I like to ask, where does that live in your body? Right? Because there's a lot of language around that. There's, mm-hmm. well, what's your heart telling you? Right? Or what's your gut telling you? Right? I'll say to my kids, in your heart of hearts, what do you know to be true or to be the right thing? Mm-hmm. Is, I do think it's in there. I do think it's a body response. And I think that yeah. when we slow down and connect and find where that is in our body, mm-hmm. and, and I don't know that it has to be one spot all the time your whole life, but it seems to me like when I ask people in my office, they tend to grab the midsection or they try mm-hmm. to grab their heart. So that's got to mean something. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, the other favorite book we like to mention, you know what I want to say, right? Uh, go for it. Say no, it. No, I want to see if you know. No, okay. I want, to, I want you to say it. <laughs> the Body Keeps the Score, uh-huh, uh-huh, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, Bessel van der Kolk. Um, I call it the Trauma Bible. Yeah, but it's, true. you know, like just the, just the idea that, you know, your, your body remembers even if you can't remember. Right. You know, and... Right. Um, and so it's, you know, what is your body telling you that, that, you know, the butterflies in your stomach or, you know, maybe it's, uh, you know, your shoulders tightening or your head hurting or your hands tingling. Mm-hmm. I mean, what is all that meaning? Like, what is your body mm-hmm. telling you? Absolutely. And that again, um, sitting still and letting yourself take a deep dive within self is just, is not, um, does not come natural for people to do mm-hmm. like it feels like it's quiet but it's loud yeah. you know it feels it, i'm safe but i feel like i'm in danger uh-huh. you know what mm-hmm. feels right what feels uh uh appropriate is mm-hmm. to move keep moving mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and as long as i'm moving i feel like it's like the world i i stay large in my world but the moment I'm still, I get small and the world gets really big. Yeah. Gosh, it's the American, uh, you know, belief system right there. Yeah. Just stay busy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just work, 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 right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think, you know, some people, I talk about this a lot with clients too, that they're, you know, they're, uh, they're staying busy and they're, uh, you know, on the surface, you know, they're seemingly by cultural, our cultural standards or American standards are very successful, um, but they're not really moving toward anything. They're right. just running from just something, mo- you moving. know, just trying mm-hmm. to not let the thing catch up with them. Mm-hmm. And, and I think a lot of times that thing is just stillness. Sure, you know? sure. Um, and, and so, 
So let's, with the time that we have left, let's talk about this idea of it being the antidote to gaslighting. Okay. So we yeah. also, uh, no, we didn't, yeah, we've done many, we've done a lot on gaslighting, uh, on gaslighting yeah. uh, whether it's just a, a pre recorded video, we've done some live stuff on talking about gaslighting. Mm-hmm. But when you think of, like, when you heard me say earlier, like, um, I kind of wonder, like, if authenticity, you know, that this just might be the antidote to gaslighting, mm-hmm. what popped into your head? I thought that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. Let's go with it. Let's do that. Yes, Josh, <laughs> you cracked the code. Uh, no, I did think about it because I often will spend time in my work um, helping people recognize gaslighting and then mm-hmm. formulating what do I do. And first, you have to recognize that it's happening, which right. means being connected with self enough to say, Something, something's fishy, right? Yeah. Um, and then what you do when you recognize that is call it out, right? So that's kind of the game plan. Like, that's how we work that mm-hmm. through. And I think that being authentic and being aware of authentic self is exactly how you access that. First, mm-hmm. what's that pull of, oh, that's fishy. I don't like that way that smells. And then I am going to authentically speak what's going on for me. Right. Right. So I do think that that sounds the idea mm-hmm. that authenticity is mm-hmm. the antidote, right? Yeah, we talk about trusting your gut, yep. right? Like, yep. you know, and what does that mean? Like, it doesn't mean that that you can't be wrong in what you think is wrong. So, right. like, if your gut's telling you something is wrong, and your imagination says, "Well, it must be this or that," well, mm-hmm. it might not be this or that, sure. but you can trust that something isn't right. 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 You know, and and it, at least it's enough for me to call something into question. So maybe everything is right, mm-hmm. but my gut is picking up on something. So at least it at least warrants a, a conversation. Right. And um, and I think um, a lot of times people that are being gaslit, like their guts are telling, like are like calling out to them, crying out to them, and but the 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 words of the gaslighter and the the cunning nature of gaslighting is so either intoxicating deceptive mm-hmm. hypnotic in some ways uh, yeah. you know where they they just ignore their their gut they, mm-hmm. they learn to not trust their own body right right, right. and um uh, someone that I, I always think of this person um and i hope i'm getting this right in terms of what i remember him saying but it's john wooden you know oh, that yeah. was the I guess probably considered, I don't know if he is the winningest coach in college basketball or he's one of the one most One of them. I don't know if Krzyzewski passed like, him. But. Yeah, so people mm-hmm. who, who know more about uh, college basketball can can weigh in on that. But I do think he, he won, you know, something like 10 out of 13 national championships or something like that. Something, something bonkers. Like just wild like that. But, you know, but everybody knows who John Wooden is if you're a sports fan. And in the pyramid of success that he mm-hmm. came up with, which mm-hmm. is his life, his life's work. Um, but I think I remember in a documentary done on him that, uh, I think I remember if I'm correct here that he didn't w- want to watch game film of other teams mm. playing because the idea was that if you know your game well enough, you don't need to know the other, mm. the, the compet- your competitor's game. You just you need to know your game mm-hmm. first, and I, I I don't obviously I don't think uh, basketball coaches across the board are going to agree with that, you know. Sure. Because obviously a lot of coaches still watch game film sure. and they know who John Wooden is. Sure. Um, but I would I would go out on a limb to say that most of them would say that it doesn't matter how much you know somebody else's game. If you don't know your own, then it just isn't going to mm-hmm, matter, right? Mm-hmm. So you got to know your own game very well. Sounds like you're really uh, hearing some echoes of your message as a therapist, right? Yeah. To the echoes of that, yeah. I mean, isn't that largely like when, we, when it, it comes to this part of the work, that what yeah. we're helping people do is, yeah. you know, and it's not, I mean... And for a lot of people, it's not even, they don't even know what their game is because it, they hadn't even written it yet. Mm-hmm. You know, they hadn't even, uh, they hadn't even uh, put the plays in the book, you know. And, mm-hmm. and that's why some of this work of, be, you know, accessing your authentic self or 
bringing forth your true self or whatever you want, however you want to frame it, I think it just takes some time. And so mm-hmm. people got to learn to be patient yes. with themselves right. on this. Right, absolutely. Yeah. That's kind of an- the annoying summary of most mental health treatment. <laughs> yeah. Being patient. Do you, do you remember going through it yourself? Like kind of chipping away, like getting... Oh, sure. Chipping yeah. away at it? Grad school really knocked that oh, out man, of you, yes. right? Mm-hmm. That yeah. was an intense formation of self. I would say that was that's probably my first real experience. And, and for people that don't know, like the the therapist going through a graduate program, the, the future therapist going through a mm-hmm. graduate program, um, any program that's that's worth it, in my opinion, is probably going right. to chip kind of chip away at you over yeah. the next you know two or three years. Yeah, yeah, and then rebuild you. Yeah, you yeah, know? And, sure. Uh, yeah, but then you know, I think there there are steps, and I can remember even in my adult life, uh, just you know, I can I can look back on it and see points in time where I'm just being chipped away at, you know, mm-hmm. kind of like uh, I think it uh, who who was it the the statue of uh, David? Oh, Leonardo. Yeah, I think I, I think it was. Him that said that you know Leon, uh, David was always in there. He just chipped away the pieces. Yes, I think. yes. I and so, it. like, I think we're always kind of being you know chipping away. Mm-hmm. And I can look back, and, but then there are definitely some times where like a big hunk fell off. Right, right, right. And you're like, oh, right. I didn't know this about me. Uh huh. Uh-huh. You know. And it can be scary, yeah. right? Those like any new experiences are going to be, sure. are going to have some fear involved, right? Yeah. Yeah. The whole idea of you know. Mm-hmm. You've got to reveal who you are and take a stand sure. for who you are. That's yeah. it's scary and risky. Right. And, and I think the more confident and competent we become in our own bodies and our own existence, I don't think we really have to be too terribly worried about who's sure. deceiving us and who's not mm-hmm. because um, uh, I'm confident that I'll, I know what game I want to play Yeah, and... Uh, if uh, I don't think I'm like uh, me, Josh Nichols, I don't think I'm immune to, in, you know, being uh, in a relationship with somebody that could be deceptive or right. deceiving me or be lied to. Right. I just I just feel like that whatever it, it could happen, I feel like I could handle it. You know, I oh. feel like I I'm confident enough in my path or in my journey that I'd be able to figure it out. You know, well, that's the mantra that I try to. That I have that sometimes I'll sh- share with clients so they can borrow it if they need to, right? The mantras that I'll know what I need to do when I need to do it. Mm. Yeah, I like that. that doesn't mean that I can predict or be safe. You know, lots of clients mm-hmm. will say to us, oh, well, if I ever date or find a partner, I want to bring them in so you can tell me if they're good or if they're liars. And mm-hmm. and we're not, we have no crystal ball, right? Yeah. Um, the idea that you can be completely safe, right? I had mm-hmm. one client that was like, should I ask my boyfriend to get a psyche valve so I could really see, <laughs> right? Yeah. I get that. I get that yeah. desire for safety and security, right? But right. authentic self says, I have, I trust myself that I'll, I can do what needs to be done. Yeah. Right? I That's agree. authentic self, yeah. I think. Well, once again, we we solved it. We did. Every week. Maybe we should just change this podcast to authentic. The one the only podcast the only, you need to listen to. Right, right. <laughs> it's all solved. But before we go, let's. Uh, I want to ask Hannah if she does. She have a celebrity that she thinks of when she thinks of authentic. And if you get your, you guys can only get, you only get to hear Hannah. You don't get to see Hannah. That's right. At least right now. Mm-hmm. And you might not get to hear her <laughs> <laughs> if she doesn't answer this question. <laughs> She does. She's stumped. Things popping into her head. Stumped. (laughs) Maybe because very few people are authentic. I thought she might say Taylor Swift. I don't Uh, know. Yeah, that's probably what she would say. Okay, we'll speak for her. I'm sure she she would love that. Most people love having someone speak for them. I would say you know I've seen I've seen different types of behind the scenes interviews and stuff with Taylor Swift and um I don't my my daughter listens to her music all the time and stuff but I uh, um. You know, I definitely can see how she mm-hmm. uh, is a fan favorite because I'm wondering if it's because of authenticity. Sure. You know? I do think people are drawn to authentic people more often than fake people, sure. right? Yeah. Yeah. I think it talks about that in that article, too, about like mm-hmm. the, you know, we hear things like the deep fake, <laughs> like in yeah. political world, uh, or fake news, AI or, world. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. in our, uh, 
when we were growing up, we used to say no fake. Never, never <laughs> did did people say that? Oh, well, uh, in my world, okay. yeah. Okay. Now I'm wondering if it's a th- was a thing. <laughs> 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 all right we need to go okay all right but we appreciate okay. uh, everybody that that tunes in and again don't forget to to like subscribe follow five star review all Absolutely. that stuff if you like some of the things that we're doing and uh this again this uh, welcome to for those listening to this on the podcast happy new year because mm-hmm. this year this is dropping this just dropped in the, the first week of january so um we're off to see what 2024 brings now. That's right. Thank you. All right.